Hello students, welcome once again to Precalculus. Today we do a section 1.1, we're talking about the rectangular coordinate system. For example today we want to sketch a rectangular coordinate graph, in this case it's already set up for us, and to label the quadrants. Plot and label any point in the graph and explain your label. Now, first of all, let us start with the quadrant. Now notice the Rectangular coordinate graph has a solid line here, horizontal line, which we will call the X axis, and a vertical, which we'll call the Y axis. So that's the first thing. Notice these two axes separate the plane into four quarters or four quadrants. We start by labeling the first quadrant on the top right. We call that quadrant one or Q1 for short. The next on the top left is quadrant two or Q2. The third is on the bottom left, quadrant three or Q3. And the fourth, which is on the bottom right, quadrant four or Q4, right? Labeled in Roman numerals. And now we want to plot and label any point. So let me just pick an arbitrary point, let us say here. How do we label this point? Notice we have two axes, an X axis, which is horizontal, and a Y axis, which is vertical. What we want to do is in order to name this point, we use coordinate pairs X and Y. You know, we say X comes before Y uh, in our alphabet, that's how some people remember it. Or we can think of it as if X goes on horizontal and Y goes vertical, and we think of we creep before we walk or creep before we stand up if you're thinking about babies or progression of growth of babies. All right, so how far along the horizontal are we going? Notice each of these is one unit. So we're going one, two, three, four, it's five. So we have four on the X, and so our X coordinate is four. And then if we look at how high we've gone on the Y, it's one, two, three units up. So that arbitrary point now, we call that four, three. So we explain it by saying we are using the coordinate pairs X and Y, and we have moved four units on the X, three units on the Y. So the point is four, three. Now the next thing we'd like to talk about is a distance, hold on, it says the distance between two points, x sub 1, y sub 1, and x sub 2, 2, y sub 2, is uh, radical x sub 1 minus x sub 2 all squared plus y sub 1 minus y sub 2 all squared. And we could say for distance, we could say d equals that, if you want to write that. All right, so that is our distance formula. So what we have, or what we can do, is just pick two arbitrary points. Let's call this point x sub 1, y sub 1, and then this other point is x sub 2, y sub 2. So those are the coordinates. Now how do we arrive at this distance formula? Now recall um, our Pythagorean theorem in which we said that you know like a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Let's, let's, you could call that Let's say any letter, let's call it D. And let us say we made a right triangle by these. Think of the horizontal distance and the vertical distance. And then this is a right triangle, right? So this point right here would be um, X sub 1. And then this would be y sub 2, right? So let's think of the horizontal first. The horizontal distance is the distance along the x. So that would have been x sub 1 minus x sub 2, right? Now distance is always positive. So if you look at it in the other way, x sub 2 x sub 1, that will be the same thing, right? The same distance. Distance is positive. Okay? Now, let's look at the vertical. 
vertical distance would be y sub 1 minus y sub 2. And again, it really doesn't matter. Either way you take it, it's absolute values, okay? So if we're looking at, let's say our distance was d. So let's say this was side A, this was B, and let's say this was side D. So D squared, we're looking at it in terms of Pythagorean, would be x sub 2 squared, x sub 1 minus x sub 2 squared, and uh, y sub 1 is y sub 2 all squared. Since it's squared, the absolute value doesn't really matter right here. And so if we Continue that down, so d would be x sub 1 minus x sub 2, all squared, y sub 1 minus y sub 2, squared, take the square root of all of that, okay? Now, it's a positive square root, right, because distance is positive. Now, know here that, again, it really didn't matter how you label this, x sub 1, y sub 1, it could have been down here, it really didn't matter. Because one, you're taking absolute values, two, you're squaring them, so that's how we get our distance formula. Next thing we want to talk about is our distance or midpoint formula. Now, the midpoint is a coordinate pair. Midpoint is a coordinate pair, right? Coordinate pair, a pair of coordinates, okay? So if we took, again, two points, say this was x sub 1, y sub 1, and then x sub 2, y sub 2. The midpoint between these two points, or if we drew like a line segment, the midpoint would be, let's see around here, it's called the M. And the midpoint would be given algebraically by just adding the x coordinates x sub 1 plus x sub 2 over 2 comma y sub 1 plus y sub 2 over 2 right so that is how you find a midpoint never forget it's a coordinate player let's go through an example real quick um we have points negative 3 and 6, so we go negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and 6, so that is your point A, your 3 and 6, and then B is 5 and 1, so you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on X, and 1 up on the Y, and so we have negative 3, 6, and 5, 1 labeled. So remember, D was our distance formula D, or in this case, D of AB would be square root of x sub 1 minus x sub 2 all squared plus y sub 1 minus y sub 2 all squared. So we have to make a connection between what is happening here. We could make our a x sub 1 y sub 1 or b x sub 2 y sub 2 and then plug in these numbers into the formula and so what we have is negative 3 minus 5 all squared plus uh, 1 minus 6 all squared. And so that's going to be radical negative 8 minus negative 8 squared plus negative 5 squared. So that's going to be a square root of 64 plus 25, which is going to be a square root of 8 and 9. And uh, if you have a calculator, which you do, you can punch this in the calculator and it will give you a decimal answer. Now to find the midpoint of AB, so M would be equal to X sub 1 plus X sub 2 over 2, comma, coordinate pair, Y sub 1 plus Y sub 2 all over 2. So that's going to be equal to, put in the numbers, negative 3 plus 5. Notice we're not adding here. We're not subtracting. We're adding over 2 and uh, 1 plus 6 over 2. 
So your final answer will be one and three and a half. Or one three point five. Okay? So that's your midpoint right there. Okay. Another thing that you might be asked to find out is to find out if some coordinates form, let's say, the vertices of a right triangle. So we have a point negative 2 and 3. So negative 2, 3. We have a point 4, 1. So we go 4 and x, 1 up, so that is 4, 1. And then we have point negative 1, 7. So we go negative 1 on x, 7 on the y. So I want to find out if these form a right triangle. Uh, in the first instance, you might say, well, it doesn't look like a right triangle. So no, you might say, well, it kind of look like a tri right triangle. So you might say, well, I'm not so sure. So let's try to do it algebraically. Algebraically, what we will, might want to do is to try to apply something like Pythagorean theorem. And so what you want to find is the distances to find out if the, the squares of the short sides or the legs would be the square of the long side or the hypotenuse. Okay, so let's say distance AB. Let's find distance of AB. Distance of AB is uh, see, so we're gonna do radical negative two minus four squared plus three minus one squared. So it's gonna be radical of negative six squared or thirty-six. Plus 2 squared, that's 4, so that's radical 40. And then distance of AC, B, negative 2 minus negative 1 squared, 3 minus 7 squared. Squared of all of that, so that's going to be negative 2 plus 1. That's negative 1 squared, so that's just 1. 3 minus 7, that's negative 4 squared. That is 16. So that's radical 17. So distance of BC is going to be equal to 4 minus negative 1 squared plus 1 minus 7 squared the square root of all that and so 4 minus negative 1 that's 5 squared that's 25 plus 1 minus 7 that's negative 6 squared that's 36 so 5 plus 36 is 61 right so the longest side is 61 so we want to treat this as our hypotenuse and then treat these as our legs. So what I'll find is radical 40 squared plus radical 17 squared. That equals radical 61. Okay? That equals radical 61. Radical 40 squared is 40 plus radical 17 squared is 17. That equals to 61. And the answer is 57 not equal to 61 so this is not a right triangle so these do not form do not form a right triangle triangle all right triangle okay good now next thing we want to find out real quick